back to Todd Family Farm. On today's episode, we're going to spotlight a local business. We order feed and we get it bagged and made for our milk cow. And we're going to take you from the order all the way to bringing it home. So we go through Dole's All Farm Supply and we're spotlighting and featuring and showing you all about Dole's All Farm Supply today. farm supply along with my wife and my son and my uh, son is a third generation owner of the feed store it opened in 1958 at a country location and then moved to here and I'm very happy my son's 41 now and he's basically in charge and I'm going to be trying to retire out and he has a 10 year old son who is uh, very active in the feed store Hopefully it'll go on another generation. And we're just here to serve the, the local public on livestock needs and, and some of their hardware that goes along with it, like gates and hay feeders and stuff like that, and hopefully be a service to the community. Dolezal's is a one-stop shop for all the farmers in the area. They carry everything there from tank heaters to heat tape. They carry a bunch of different gloves. They are also a dealer in lacrosse footwear, such as insulated rubber boots. They also work with Miraco and have a bunch of different designs of livestock waterers there that you can choose from. And they are also a dealer in Gallagher electric fencing supplies. They have insulators and they have energizers and tighteners and solar powered energizers. And then of course they have the wire there for electric fencing. And a very important part of the cattle raising industry is ear tags and everyone has a different style and size and brand that they like. And so Dolezal has to carry a bunch of different styles and brands and sizes and numbered and unnumbered. And if they don't have it there, then they can certainly get it there for you. Can you tell us what you remember about when it first started on the farm when you were a child? Well, I, he started in 58 and I was born in 56. So I barely remember the very start of it. But I can remember by the time I was six and eight, we were just climbing on the bags and the feed industry was just starting. Uh, everybody, all the farmers didn't used to feed any commercial feed. They just feed their own oats and their own corn and, and stuff like that. And uh, we would start selling some bag feed and the livestock did a lot better and the business grew from there. But I can remember the first bulk feed we sold. Uh, a guy, a neighbor ordered two ton of bulk feed and the other neighbors stopped there on the gravel road and said, my, my, what are you going to do with all that feed? And it was just two ton of bulk feed. And now we're delivering about 350 tons a week of bulk feed. So uh, as, the, as the feed business proved that the animals grew better and could do it for a more reasonable price, for what you were selling, the feed business grew from that, but it was a it was a pretty meager start. Hi, I'm Darren Dolezal. I'm co-owner here at Dolezal Farm Supply. We're going to make up uh, 20 bags of feed, which is a thousand pounds. We're going to run it through our mixer here, which is. By today's standards, kind of outdated, but for what we do, it works really well. Um, but we'll get the two ingredients that we need. We'll run it through the mixer to blend together. We'll send it over to our bagger, and we'll bag up a thousand pounds of feed for you here. You see that? It will, the, he'll drop all the feed right in there. And there's an auger that takes it up all the way up and then flings it out at the top. And then it just keeps taking it up and blending it. So this is the mixer. That is a weigh buggy, and so you can weigh how much you're doing in there uh, as it goes in. So it'll go up to like, you could probably fit like 600 or 650 pounds of corn in there pretty easy. We'll adjust the weight that we need here. We only need two ingredients, just corn and protein. So we'll put our corn in first, let it in, and then add our protein so the mixer doesn't beat the pellets up really bad. Those are 
just a basic way buggy. It's just a balance bar, so when you get enough weight in there, that'll pop up. We'll have the weight that we need. When we're making a lot of feed, we can make oh, between 1,000 and 1,500 pounds of feed a minute is what we can make. How much feed would a mixer hold? Uh, this one holds uh, six and a half tons is what this one holds. So 13,000 pounds is what this will hold. So it's going to pop up. That would be what we need. It should be 750 pounds. Right, what we need. Say it's open up and it's in. Yep, nope, we didn't have a bulk truck to begin with. We just had a truck that only handled bag feed. And we eventually bought a bulk truck that could haul either one. But we still sold mostly bag feed when it was starting out. Now you, how many trucks do you run now? Now we have uh, two semis and three tandems and a straight truck, so. How much How much feed can you haul on, on say, a tandem? Uh, we can put about 15 ton on a tandem. And that's for like local deliveries? For local deliveries. And you bring it in on a semi and how much does a semi hold? Uh, we bring about 25 ton at a time in on a semi and we haul it back out. But a, a lot of our deliveries are still just two, three or six ton at a time. We do have some customers that'll take 15 ton at a time, but uh, mostly we deal with the smaller, the smaller livestock farmers that are in the area and they're ordering uh, Three or six ton will last them a week and then we deliver again the next week. So these are the protein pellets. So that's providing protein to the cow to get it to what? to help it produce milk and reproduce and grow. It's mainly made out of wheat mid. It's going to have all the minerals and vitamins in it that it needs to, just to help with the function of the cow, what you want it to do. So this plus corn is a complete ration. Yep. So we're adding 250 pounds of this. With that and the corn, that should be between like a 16 and 17 percent diet for the cow. Open up the mixer and send it over to our baggers. So he's adjusting the leg. He'll let it down into the leg down there. It'll go up and it's going to go right over in a bin up there. And that's the bagger. You can hear it hitting, and then they'll drop it down, and that's actually a hanging scale, and it'll scale out 50 pounds exactly in every bag, and that's a sewing machine right here, and they'll sew it up. So this is where we bag our feet at. It's a pretty simple process. You just attach a bag to that chute over there, pull a lever, it's, got, it's a balanced weight. You, put, you go to where it reads zero, which is neutral, which is 50 pounds in the bag. You drop it off, fold the bag up so it's ready to go. Then it goes through an automatic sewer. It's got a trip wire on it. Let it sew it up, take it, flip it over. It's more of a manual process than some, but we can bag, oh, when, if there's three of us here, we can bag uh, six or eight bags a minute. So it goes pretty fast to get stuff So back. Darren, tell us about, you grew up in, you grew up here, right? Yep. And what's some of your earliest memories? I mean, you've just been you've uh, been in, in town with the store your whole life. Yep. So I, no, I well I went out to the farm also, but yeah, I was eleven or twelve when we moved here. 
and just grew up down here. And just any time I wasn't at school or sports, I was here. And you went to college and got a business degree in ag? Yep, is that ag, correct? Yep, ag business degree. Yep. What, which college did you go to? Iowa State. Iowa State. Yep. So day-to-day operations and, and a lot of the management and all, you just completely in charge of that? Yep. I take care of all the, all the ordering, the production, invoicing, uh, making sure lining up truck loads to go out, uh, reordering feed, and all that I take care of. Yep. A lot of the billing. I do most of the billing also. Yep. And uh, every once in a while, your wife's down here helping, and you have a son that runs yes, around here. I have quite three a bit kids. My son's down here a lot. My uh, two girls, they come down, and they answer the phone, and they're down here quite a bit. My one daughter was here all afternoon yesterday. So It's as much of a family business as you can get. Oh, yeah, it is. All of our employees have worked for us for quite a while, and we know them really well and their kids. And my kids, they'll go ride with them in the trucks or help them or do whatever. It's definitely, definitely family. A lot of our customers are third generation, just like I'm third generation down here. Yep. Now, uh, you not only have you grown with uh, trucks, but you you employ quite a few people locally. Yeah, started out as just me and my wife, what, and then we eventually hired one employee, and then as we needed, we hired another employee, and then needed another truck, and then another employee, and then another truck, and and so right now we have the uh, five trucks, and we have seven employees plus plus my wife and myself. Uh, what employee's been here the longest? Uh, well, my main truck driver's been here 24 years. 24 years. Bruce, that's Bruce there? That's Bruce. Bruce yeah. has been here 24 years. 24 years. In and I've known Bruce all my life. I went to school with him. He's in my grade. We were lab partners in, in uh, junior high. So I've known Bruce a lot longer than 24 years. But he's been here working at the business for 24 years. I've known your dad a lot longer than you have. Yeah, yeah. I I uh, uh, worked here with Bruce, and when I and, and when I was a teenager, I I came in when we were seven, getting premix to grind our own chicken feed, and now I've got kids that are seven coming in. I've got a son that's that'll be seven next year. So, um, yeah, we've been at this location for uh, well, this will be thirty years. Thirty years. March first will be thirty years. Oh. I'm Debbie Dolezal, and I'm owner also with the rest of the Dolezal family, and we, I get to do the books. That's what I get to do, answer the phone, greet a lot of the customers, talk to them, make them feel welcomed. Um, you, at any given time, you come down here to Dolezal's, and there'll be three or four guys just hanging around the table. Some folks come in, they don't even get anything except a cup of coffee and a smile. Very and this is the place to gather and just kind of get some encouragement and fellowship and uh, maybe some latest news and a, a howdy and then go back out. So, Very true. And Adam used to work for us, so he knows exactly how it is and how it goes. And it's probably still one of the only family-run businesses around, in the feed business anyway, yeah. for over... Long, long time. You spend this is your your kind of your cubby hole, yeah, but this is my it's a little, cozy area here. My little it's, right now it's kind of messy because we just came through all the harvest and very busy time for me and the end of the year. So on my next agenda, if you want to stay and help me, <laughs> I'm gonna clean. <laughs> <laughs> no, no point in cleaning before you get taxes. Uh, uh, I know it's just, <laughs> just tax season. Now it's a tax season, so we go from one thing to another. So, yeah. yep. But anyway. That's about, that's about it. Don't really okay. know much. Thank you, Deb. <laughs> You're welcome. So for all the products uh, that a farmer would need, essentially you would have just about anything a local farmer would need, from fencing to feed to seed. Yeah, we, uh, I, I am a farmer myself. I, I farm some ground and I own some cattle. So I have a really good idea in my lifetime on what a farmer needs in his day-to-day -day operations. <clears throat> So we try to furnish most anything they need, but that doesn't exclude everything. Like we don't carry bolts and nuts and washers and stuff like a hardware store would cover. But as far as livestock needs and feed needs, uh, we try to cover everything they would need. Very seldom do we have somebody walk through the door and ask us for something we don't have. Like we co we carry all fencing products and electric fencing products and, and uh, livestock feed of about every kind, uh, including including some exotic feeds that they figure we wouldn't have but we serve uh, try to serve all the needs in the community so you can see too they have a whole supply of different feed that they make 
uh, they've got butcher pig feed, they got whole oats, they'll have horse feed, sheep feed, they've got feed for chickens, they've got a broiler, which is growing feed, they've got a layer feed, um, They've got straight whole corn, cracked corn, ground corn, just about anything you can want. They keep on hand all the time and supply all of the, basically all the basic farm animals. They have feed on hand all the time, ready to go. Yeah, I'll go get the other tent. All right, there we are. Start to finish and all the way home so you can feed your cow. What's some of the most unique feeds that you've made and, and had to acquire and get for customers over the years? Well, we, we sell fish food, we sell wild wild game bird food, like for pheasants and quail, in large amounts. I mean, we sell large amounts of wild bird feed. We sell uh, exotic feed for like llamas and alpacas and camels. We have, uh, we have a farmer that raises camels for profit, and, and uh, it's not just a hobby, and he sells camels. We service those, those people. We have uh, probably the largest deer farm in Iowa that we service, and he sells deer to hunting game feet, uh, preserves. So we, we cover a wide amount of uh, different animals. Now when Doug tells you that he feeds fish, it's more than just people like me who go, I go and get catfish food and throw out to my pond, fish, catfish. Uh, they actually at Dolezal's supply feed to a hatchery and they have uh, means of feeding baby fish at the hatchery and getting them started. So he's supplying a local hatchery who commercially produces fish for retail sale. Um, of course, the camels are out here near us. Uh, and again, I can recall they have, they'll feed pigeons and they get commercially available pigeon food. They do a lot of rabbit feed. I think one time I recall they got parrot food uh, in, in a bulk bag or you know like 25 or 50 pounds at a time. Parrot feed, uh, ostrich, emu, they do, they do bulk feed for bison uh, so there's a lot, you name it they do it. They do, like you said, they have one of the biggest deer farms or the biggest deer farm in Iowa. They do elk feed, deer, uh, white tail deer feed, um, you name it I think those always can get it. So they have gates. You see all the gates? Those are creep feeders. Uh, they feed a lot of creep feed that, that uh, supplements the calves on pasture. Creep feeds are pretty important around here. Uh, you see all the feed bunks. And a lot of fencing around here. So you can see there's uh, usually, uh, there's a lot of posts that's uh, covered up in snow right now. But they all have every single kind of post you could need to fence. And you can fence in a pasture. You come here and you can leave with everything you need to fence in uh, 200 acres of pasture or uh, uh, half an acre. And uh, gates and woven wire, barbed wire, drinkers, mineral feeders. Over here, that's like a calving pen and a big hay trailer. Uh, lots of people use calving pens around here and uh, just about everything you need to deal with cattle you can get here. And you sell a lot of pet food too, right? We sell a lot of pet food. For uh, local people we sell dog and cat food and, and beyond just what the farmers. Farmers own their pets and they feed their cats definitely in the winter. They feed their dog and cats in the summer also but they're uh, more concerned about feeding them in the winter. Nature gets to feed them quite a bit more in the summer. but. Uh, just the people around town, they also come in here. We have, we have, we carry bird seed and softener salt and dog and cat food and 
And uh, we sell other products that in-town people like to stop and buy. They might just buy cracked corn, or they might buy whole corn to feed the wild deer, the pheasants, when it's snowy like this. So we do business with a lot of people. That's how we order feed and get it in here for the cow. You can get it in bulk, but with one cow, we just get it in bags and they will make whatever you want, whatever protein, however, ground, cracked, pelleted, bulk, bag, they can do it all. Just about for any animal, as long as you know what kind of nutrition that animal needs, they'll do it. So that's those all farm supply and that's how we get our feed. We appreciate you watching. Uh, we want to encourage you to uh, come back and watch some more support the channel so we can keep doing stuff like this and support Abby and some of the stuff she's doing it's hard work doing all this editing and all so uh, kind of down there you can subscribe there's a little button that says subscribe and there's a thumbs up so maybe and give us a comment uh, tell us what you think or questions or uh, something else you might like to see suggestions and subscribe and, and give us a thumbs up we appreciate it thank you